So exercise. Exercise is important. We all know this. But let me tell you how important. Whereas nutrition, sleep, and stress management creates the environment for the brain to grow, exercise and mental activity actually grow the brain, actually allow those neurons to connect. And it's, it's critical that we act in, incorporate this into our daily life. There have been many studies, many, many. As, as, as Aisha said, if we would have put all the papers into this talk, you would be here till tomorrow. In fact, one of the things that we found when we published the book, Harper kept coming back and saying, you have to cut down on the citations. You have to cut down on the citations. So we had to put uh, 300 of them in the website to, for people to check in the website. Because they said, if the book is, I didn't, we didn't even know this, if the book is past a certain thickness, there's an eye test that people walk by the book. So we had to cut down on the citation. I didn't, things I didn't know before. Um, <clears throat> but for exercise, there are profound amount of data of the effect of exercise on brain. Uh, Framingham, Framingham Longitudinal Study, one of the longest, uh, most valid studies in the country. Daily brisk walk, my favorite form of exercise. <clears throat> Daily brisk walk. So you, none of you have an excuse. Daily brisk walk, well, some of you, but, uh, can reduce your chance of developing Alzheimer's by 40%. This has been repeated in several studies. So a daily brisk walk. Why do I say brisk walk? I'm not a big fan of running and, and uh, some of the traumatic exercises, but a walk, biking, you know, a, tread, a treadmill or even a, um, a recumbent bike is my favorite form of exercise. If I was Secretary of Health and Human Services, which I would be fired the next day for this edict, I would connect every TV to a recumbent bike so nobody's TV would be working unless they're moving the bike. You, you're clapping now. You wouldn't be clapping the day after. <laughs> I know that uh, all these letters would be going out. Uh, <clears throat> so other studies, uh, physical activity and risk of cognitive decline and meta-analysis of prospective studies. 2010, 34,000 people, high level of physical activity, reduced your cognitive decline by 38%. Even moderate exercise reduced it by 35% or, or so. That's remarkable. When have you heard about the fact that, I'm going to repeat this, that cognitive decline and dementia can be prevented? If all these papers exist that independently exercise does this, not small studies, Framing Them Health Study, Adventist Health Study, California Teachers Study, these humongous studies, retrospective and prospective, that show this, why is nobody talking about it? You know why? Because there's no money made from kale, broccoli, and to potatoes. There's no money made from brisk walk, literally. So this is, this is not conspiracy. Nobody's doing that, but it's not as sexy. That's where I come in. <laughs> so <laughs> well, I, 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 so um, physical activity in elderly is associated with improved executive function and processing speed. Processing speed is something that's affected as we get older. Not a lot. Like I said, if you avoid pathology, it's minuscule. You won't notice it. But exercise reduced the decline in cognitive function, especially dementia, and specifically executive by 60%. That's remarkable. Exercise and memory decline, again, other studies that show the same thing. Uh, flow of blood to the frontal lobe, it affects blood flow to the frontal lobe, it affects glucose metabolism, it affects even lipid metabolism in your body, but also in your brain as well. So in many different ways, it affects the brain in a positive way. BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. <clears throat> when, I was at, when I was at NIH, um, one of the studies we did at the time, this is 2001, was we, we, there was a neurodegenerative patient. We put BDNF and GDNF into the brain through these pumps to look at the you know, regrowth of neurons and all of that. Didn't work. Hasn't worked. How many years later? You know what increases BDNF? Exercise, significantly. This is, uh, so uh, uh, instead of putting a pump into your brain, go for a brisk walk. Um, effective uh, C-reactive protein, inflammatory markers. The one factor that reduces inflammatory markers better than anything else is exercise. The one factor that increases your good cholesterol, HDL, exercise. So 
We don't need to go into men, men, study after study, 47%, 50% reduction in cognitive decline. So the next question is, what kind of exercise? Here I introduce my favorite statement in English language. It's the only language I know, so in language. It's, to the best of our knowledge today, there seems to be a need for certainty in, in those searching the internet or Dr. Google. <clears throat> that somebody must say that this is going to stop this or 100% data, or, or they say, oh, it's uh, the retrospective study and so on and so forth. No, to the best of our knowledge means that there's enough data that gives us a profound amount of certainty for a given direction. And beauty of science is it's not absolute, it's open to re ch challenge, but it's good enough and look what we've done with that. The plane we came in was along those lines, you know, to the best of our knowledge, this is how uh, aer aerodynamics works. To the best of our knowledge, this is how you, uh, you create food. This is the best of our knowledge, this is... So I, I'm, I'm emphasizing that as part of what we do as um, myth busting in, in science, there's a lot of noise out there, this keto diet and South Beach diet and all these, these are all confirmation biases. But the data, profound data, shows that exercise, there are three types that are effective. First of all, every time a patient comes to us, and says, I say, you have to exercise. Oh, I do. I have plenty of exercise. Don't even worry about me. I say, what do you do? I walk the neighborhood. I garden. You know, I walk the dog. I said, those are fantastic, but those are just meditation. Aerobic exercise, more than you thought. So that brisk walk, it should get you tired. You don't have to... You know, count your pulse and subtract your age, none of that. If you have difficulty finishing a sentence, that's good aerobic exercise. And how much? Work your way towards. That's another phrase we use. We're not absolutist. We're not binary. Work your way towards. And small increments of work. 25 to 30 minutes of significant aerobic exercise, four to five days a week. If you haven't done that kind of exercise in years, start with five minutes of brisk walking, and that's it, for two months. You didn't get to this point over weeks, don't try to get out of it over weeks. So you should be getting to 25 minutes to 30 minutes of brisk walking, four to five days a week, over six months to eight months period. And then it will be a successful behavior. New year resolutions don't work. <clears throat> the second thing is, even if you've worked out or exercised half an hour, but yet you sat for eight hours, Studies show that that negated that benefit. There's nothing as bad as recumbency, just sitting in one spot. Right now, everybody wants to get up now. Yeah. But no, you've been working out the whole time. I, I'm seeing that. That's good. But <clears throat> yes, yes. So move throughout the day, every hour, get up. Put, you know, all of these smartphones and watches have these bells that get, you know, after an hour it rings. Get up, stretch, walk to the kitchen. Well, maybe not the kitchen, to the bathroom and other places. So walk often. Third was a surprising one. Initially, we had to question it because in science, there's directionality. So causation does not, uh, correlation does not causation make. What does that mean? It means that the direction might be the opposite direction. But what we found, not us, others as well, that leg strength was associated with brain health. Bigger brains, bigger legs, bigger brains. So we thought maybe people are healthier, their brains are healthier, therefore their legs are healthier. No, actually the other way was true as well. People who worked out their legs actually developed better brain health. And it makes sense. The biggest pump in your body is not your heart. It's your legs. The veins in your legs, are, are, don't, they don't have muscle. They, something has to press them to get the blood up. What is that? It's the leg muscles. <clears throat> so, it's the best, so that means more blood to the brain. The biggest source of metabolism or homeostasis of metabolism is legs. So bigger legs, bigger, better management of glucose, all of these things. And thirdly, bigger legs mean, meant more exercise, more stability, less falls, all of those things that actually get people who are older into the hospitals, and more BDNF for the brain. So if you're getting up, if you don't have knee problems, little mini squats, you know, biking, that recumbent bike and TV thing, actually it works. So get those legs strong because just the other variable that I spoke about, which is fall risk, goes down significantly. So those three things as far as exercise is concerned.